Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Reviews. And I'm really excited today. Summer movie season is here. And we, I, I mean, I just can't wait for all these summer movies. It can be so much fun. It's always a highlight of my year. And we are talking about the box office and box office predictions and just an overall summer movie preview. But I can't do that by myself. So I'm so delighted to have with me Dan and Joe all the way from Wales. Uh, thank you so much both for coming on. This is your first time on Rachel's Reviews. Uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Tell us a little bit about your show. Why don't you start, Dan? Hello. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on, Rachel. It's such a pleasure. Um, for those who don't know, Rachel's been part of our podcast you know, on many episodes. I think she's the one guest that we've had on uh, the most episodes because we just can't keep having her. We just love having her on the show. Um, and yes, um, we are Dan and Joe. Uh, as mentioned, from the Dan Joe Film Show, we're a podcast um, from Great Britain, United Kingdom, from South Wales. And um, yeah, we, uh, yeah we're, we're so excited to be here. Yeah. Uh, so Joe, what about you? We're... Yeah. So as Dan said, uh, we've been doing the Dan and Joe film show now for three years. This is our third year. Uh, we met actually doing local radio. So uh, no Cardiff, way. which is the, the capital of, of Wales um, through, through just a, a weird sort of circumstantial thing. I, a friend of mine knew somebody who was looking for a critic for, for the radio show. Dan was already on there, uh, never met before. And we just hit it off immediately uh, through our passion of film. But outside mm -hmm. of the show as well, we be became really, really close to friends. And then after a couple of years of doing uh, Radio Cardiff, um, we decided that we wanted to sort of have a bit more control over the films we were talking about and guests that we were having and things like that. So we decided to go out on our own I think you were very early on Rach I think I think, so. I think you were very early on I think definitely the first sort of season as they say the first year mm -hmm. I'd say you, you joined us yes. um, no, I think it was it for a Christmas episode it was I either can't Christmas the first or a Disney Disney theme no, was, uh, it, well, was it not was it the awful David Spade film yes that? Joe well <laughs> done that was so it. Memorable, isn't it that what film? was it called what the was wrong that wrong the wrong the missy, wrong missy. oh my yes. gosh it, it was yes. more like the wrong episode wasn't it like that was <laughs> such an awful we've film we've put and... you through it rachel we've put yeah. you through it yeah yeah i mean that is just shows how much i like you that i still went on your show <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it, it was missy. it was a definite endurance test wasn't it we were, we were just throwing you in the deep end straight away <laughs> yeah and you yeah. came back which is the positive thing so yes. we can't all be bad <laughs> so are you are you excited looking forward to this uh, summer movie season uh, it's a kind of our first i feel like full one back since 2019 uh yeah what do you yeah, think? Well, yeah, wow. When you when you put it that way, yeah, yeah. That, that is mad to think about. Because I was actually speaking to my mom before before I joined the show, and like I'm going to a gig in a couple of weeks, and we're talking about like how things feel sort of back to normal now, to the point where you feel like it never went away. But it is crazy to think. I mean, if we were to compare what films were released this time last year, I bet it'd be like a whole like night and day situation. Yeah. Um, well, so, yeah, almost everything the, last year had uh, day and date releases yeah. on streaming, yeah. which there's almost none of that this year. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, no, I'm so, so excited for, for the semi, summer movie season mm -hmm. um, to kick off. And obviously it sort of has already, I guess, with yeah. Doctor Strange and the like. But um, yeah, very, very excited. Uh, it's one of my favorite times of the, of the movie season where... Mm -hmm you know, you, you can just enjoy it and you're not so wrapped up in the sort of Oscars discourse right. and the awards discourse of, you know, who's going to win what. You can just go appreciate it for what it is and and, and enjoy the films mm -hmm. at, at sort of popcorn value. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very excited. What about you, Dan? Yeah, I'm super excited. It's like my second favorite time of the year, apart from Christmas, of course, <laughs> apart from the whole lucky <laughs> season. Um, it, I absolutely adore the summer movie season. And you're right. I think, you know, this time last year, we had films like Cruella, Black Widow, um, that were day and date with Disney+. Plus. It didn't feel quite like the cinema and like the movie scene had come back. 
Um, but this year it's so great that we have um, a pretty full schedule so far. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there are going to be more films that are going to be added later on in the summer, in July and August. Yeah. Um, but look at the lineup so far. It's looking really promising. And I, I'm really excited. I think there's I think there's something for everybody this summer, which is nice. We don't just have lots of animated children's films. We have um, family movies. We have comedies, horror. Um, so it's, just, it's you know, such a variety this summer. So I am, I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, and I have to say my predictions did change before Dr. Strange came out. We were doing this kind of late. We probably should have done it like last month, but nevertheless, um, I did change it uh, after this. I mean, it had an 82% drop from Friday to Friday. Uh, so I was less confident. It was originally my number one, but things are changing. So I'm excited to to talk about it. And, and hopefully we'll have some time at the end. We can talk about some that aren't as uh maybe more indie darlings things like that but uh but dan what do you have at number 10 in your predictions so um at number 10 and this might shock a few people but i want you to bear with me is the black phone from um, blumhouse mm. Uh, now, this is a horror film that's been delayed many, many months. Um, stars Ethan Hawke. If you've seen the trailer, um, there's a lot of homages, I feel like, to Stephen King's It um, and a lot of other kind of similar films. It's a story of um, a child who gets abducted by this um, very mysterious, sinister figure played by Ethan Hawke. And we know from the trailer that he's been doing this to uh, multiple other children. He, he's kept them in the cellar. And what's really interesting from the trailer is this kind of a supernatural element to it. So the child inside the um, cellar who's been about, um, locked in there, um, whenever he picks up this kind of broken phone, he can hear the voices of the other children and the other victims that this um, killer has kidnapped. Um, so yeah, I put that as number 10. And I think it's an unusual choice, but don't, you know, don't judge Blumhouse. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, they've had some real hits you know, Get Out and the Halloween series, so many. Um, and I think what's really interesting is, you know, when you think of something like Halloween Kills last year, um, which I remember it, it, it debuted with like 87 million. And there were still people who were quite snobby and saying, oh, it's, you know, it's not, not great. And that debuted day and day on Peacock in America. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really interesting. So yeah, um, yeah, I've put the black phone at number 10. Well, the Conjuring movies are often in the top 10 of the summer. So it's it's definitely possible. I mean, it kind of has the look almost like of a of a of the purge, maybe because you have Ethan Hawk in there. I it's definitely one I considered. And it could very well be the movie that makes the most profit this because mm -hmm. it's you know so cheap to make these uh these bloom house. I mean, a lot of these movies may not even end up being profitable because they're so expensive to make. But yeah, they still end up on the top 10. Uh, but it's, a, it's an interesting choice for sure. Uh, I, I mean, I hope it's good. I, I feel like the horror fans often end getting the short end of the stick. They, there's so many bad ones. <laughs> I feel bad. But uh, Joe, what's your number 10? So I've gone for Bullet Train uh, yeah. starring Brad Pitt. And I think this will be successful because of Brad Pitt. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, he's just one of those actors, um, you know, we talk a little bit later about Hollywood actors and, and the draw that sometimes just a name can have on, on bringing audiences into a movie. And I think Brad Pitt has definitely still got that, you know, uh, recently sort of cameoed, I guess, in The Lost City. And I wish they had kept him secret from the trailers. Mm -hmm. I just think he would have gone down even better if it had been kept as a surprise for fans in the film. But when I went to see The Lost City, you know, as soon as he was on screen, people, you know, it was just an energy in the audience and people were taking to him. So I think just having him in this, in this film alone is good enough to get a draw, but also looks very colorful high concept, not a sequel, uh, you know, in a summer where these days, especially it is all about the sequels and, and the adaptations. Um, and I think, I think many people will, especially, I think it's due out towards the later part of the summer. So sort of end of July, I think by that point, people will be looking for something which is maybe a bit more refreshing and something which feels slightly original. Um, uh, so I think it'll do really well. Uh, the concept, just briefly, uh, is basically Brad Pitt on a train full of assassins um, after a suitcase. And I think that sometimes the simpler narratives and, and the high concept ideas end up being real winners. So yeah. I've gone for uh, Bullet Train as my number 10. 
I agree. I also have it as my number 10. And I I agree with everything you said. I think, uh, yeah, a simple premise can be the most entertaining. I mean, look at Die Hard. That's a very simple premise and it's super entertaining. Um, Even something like Taken or, you know, these sort of action movies, a lot of times when they get too convoluted, uh, then they start to be not as much fun, at least for me. Uh, But uh, but this, uh, I thought the trailer was very effective. I, I was very interested and uh it seems like it'll appeal to a lot of different demographics uh that will be interested in it and so yeah i i think it's a big if it's if it's terrible then obviously won't do that well but um i'm hopeful that it'll have good buzz that'll get good reviews and that it'll be a a good uh new uh action film yeah, so, uh, fingers crossed. I mean, so crossed. it's it's a it's a double edged sword, isn't it? Because if it does really well, then you're guaranteed to get Bullet Train two in two years. Right. And it's like, well, <laughs> the, the whole thing was it was original, and then like they'll they'll end up doing a sequel and a spin off of like the other assassins or something like that. So it's a bit hopefully of a it's not a, like Speed Two Cruise Control. <laughs> yeah, and, and and totally the catchphrase will be more bullets, more trains. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's it, one hundred percent. Well. Uh-huh. Well, speaking of bullet train, um, that is my number nine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so so I, I, I wasn't quite on the same level with you. I thought I'd, uh, you know, throw a bone to Ethan Hawke. But yeah, bullet, bullet train is number nine. And I completely agree with all of you. I think it's going to be a moderate success. I don't think it's going to be, you know, reaching half a billion or anything close to that level. Um, but I think it will find its audience. And like Joe says, Brad Pitt, he sells tickets. You know, I think... You know, I've seen him and his cameo in Lost City. I, I really enjoyed him in the film. I think he he has this star quality about him, and that's what people you know pay to see. Mm-hmm. And if I was doing international, I would have this way higher. I think it's going to do very well in China, in particular. Yes, one hundred percent, because it's got that sort of edge, isn't it? Um, Even know. if it's bad, I think. It'll- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, I mean, China banned so many films this year. Right. I mean, come on. <laughs> They've got to have something. (laughs) Well, as my friend Ryan likes to say, we're taking a hard left for my, my next one is Downton Abbey new era for nine. And I, I just, I, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm a big fan and all my friends are big fans. So I, I'm, there's a lot of hype, very excited. The last film made over $200 million. Um, So it was a lot it did very well and I, it's a good movie i've seen it uh and i think fans will be really pleased with it and i i just think that we tend to underestimate the female dollar and then you have movies like the 50 shades movies or um i know there's so few but when they actually do target a female audience i think that they can have big hits on their hands um so I think it could be a surprise and and I have it at nine. Um, yeah. What about you, Joe? Well, yeah. So obviously this is a weird one because I don't know when it comes out in the States, but obviously we had it two, was it two weeks ago? Three weeks uh-huh. ago it was released. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and my mum has seen it twice since <laughs> yeah. then. Wow. So, you know, you, like you 100% right. Uh, you can't underestimate that. And, um, you know, there was a lot of hype around it. My mum was a big fan of the series, yeah. uh, loved the first film. And when, you know, I've never watched the series, but when Dan and I saw the first film and we really enjoyed it, I think the first film did a great job of bringing people in who haven't seen the series. I don't think I right. felt lost at any stage watching the movie. And for that alone, I thought it's probably one of the best uh, like leaps from the TV screen to film screen that I've ever seen. Um, I so. so I was excited for number two and it lived up to the hype. Yeah. I thought it was really enjoyable. I think there's something to be said for this escapist, you know, just living in the lives of the, these, these, you know, luxurious like lifestyle and these, especially in the sequel, you know, they go to the French Riviera, absolutely stunning. I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said, my mum's seen it twice already. Mm-hmm. I think it will be uh, a massive hit um, worldwide. And um, and yeah, but I won't spoil it, but I know Dan, I mean, I enjoyed it, but Dan 
loved it. Yay! <laughs> it truly was the full five stars from me, and I, I can't <laughs> believe it because I re- I enjoyed the first film. I thought this was even better than the first film. I think you had the landscape, the scenery. Um, I thought there was better character development in this one. And um, each cast member had their moment to shine. Um, and it was just beautifully shot and really funny and sweet. And I, I did cry at the end. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and I I was there with you know um, my 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 mum and all my family, my girlfriend. Um, and you know her mum and it was just it was really beautiful time and Joe's right it just took my mind off everything going on in the world it was just two hours of escapism and yeah so if I mean if, if, La- if Lady Mary will have me I would love to be part of the Downton Abbey <laughs> <laughs> next film <laughs> yeah. even, even, if, even if I have to like scrub the floor I'd still love it yeah I <laughs> yeah, mean you'd the, definitely be the only thing that I was like I really wish they could have gotten Matthew Good to come back because mm. it just didn't make any sense. I mean, I, no. I don't want to say spoilers, but it didn't make any sense that he wasn't there. He would be there. Mm. And uh, so that was the only part of that was like, oh, poor Lady Mary. She has the worst luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, so good. I absolutely loved all of the characters, both upstairs and downstairs, their stories, where they went. I mean, they're able to keep track and have stories for a lot of characters for one movie a lot of times that might feel kind of bloated or uh but not in this one I, it was it was very good and i'm mean, like my i don't think my friend's gonna be able to do this time because she has covid but uh but last time my friend had a, a whole party where we, we all dressed up and we had tea and, and we went and saw the movie um if she's feeling better maybe we will but uh, but there's a lot of people doing this stuff like that that are really excited about this. So I have it at nine. Uh, but I uh, see. Did you say you're nine, Joe? No. Sorry so, about that. Uh, yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, my number nine. <laughs> Again, a bit of a left left turn by you. Um, I've chosen Elvis mm. um, because I think you know. Uh, well, first of all he's got the fans there already, the fandom. Um, Obviously, his music is iconic. Um, I think, again, this could be a a dark horse in terms of the money that it makes because, you know, it's a a biopic. Um, Lots of Elvis fans. Um, You've got Tom Hanks, again, a big name uh, who who will draw in the crowd. Um, I think you've got, uh, you know, the the Presley family have already come out and endorsed it and have said that Orson Butler, you know, is going to win awards next year. I mean, they're going to say that, but still, um, you know, the fact that it's got an endorsement from the Presley family um, and it it could go, I mean, the trailers haven't necessarily done it for me. Um, I will be there, obviously, opening night, and I am intrigued to see what they do with it. I'm excited for the performances. Um, But I think there will be a lot of people out there who will enjoy it. And I think, especially long term, you know, with with an Elvis film, you've got a lot longevity of like you were just saying, Rachel, people dressing up Elvis parties. I mean, every year in South Wales, Rachel, we have the Elvis Presley uh, like day in Porth Call. It's an Elvis Presley convention where loads of Elvis Presleys come together <laughs> to go to the beach for a day. It's a thing. I mean, it really they'll is. be watching it. They'll be watching it. So, <laughs> so I've gone number nine, uh, a bit of a left field one there. Um, I think Elvis could potentially do quite well. I think it could. I mean, you look at a lot of biopics have done incredibly well. I mean, by Bohemian Rhapsody most recently just yeah. did insane at the box office. And uh, I think that Elvis is as big as Queen as far as fans. And so it's definitely a possibility. It was on my short list. Uh, yeah. I was very annoyed at Boz recently. I'm saying it was a superhero movie. <laughs> like, oh, <gosh. laughs> <laughs> Not everything needs to be a superhero right. movie. Come on. <laughs> and, it, and the length does kind of concerned me a little bit how long is it i haven't seen the like i think it's almost three hours long oh okay yeah it's it's two hours full yeah wow okay it's a lot of elvis songs though so that's (laughs) two hours 39 so yeah but uh but definitely i'm i'm looking forward to it uh are you excited for elvis uh uh dan Yes, I am. And it is actually my number eight. Um, ah. pick. So that was a very nice takeaway there. Really. <laughs> so, yeah, 
Um, so yeah, number eight, I put Elvis. <clears throat> oh gosh, sorry, bless me. Um, number eight, I put Elvis. And yeah, for the same reasons, I think Baz Luhrmann has a track record. He has a following. It's an Elvis biopic. And um, people, obviously there are some massive Elvis fans. I'm not massively excited for it. I, the trailer did wow me much more than I was anticipating. Um, I'm not massively excited. I, I love Tom Hanks and he think he kind of drew me in. I think it's going to get critical acclaim. It's going to get good reviews. I don't know whether it's going to be a box office hit, but I think with the selection of films we have, I think it's got a really good chance. So yeah, it's my number eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Joe, what's your uh, number eight? So weirdly, my number eight is The Black Phone, which we've already oh, discussed. Okay. And yeah. maybe I've got a bit more faith in it than Dan. And I think the only reason I, I think it is going to do well, and the only thing I'll really add to it, because I think obviously we've covered a lot of the points already, is I saw the brand new trailer for it uh, when Dan and I went to the cinema the other day to see something. Uh, oh, everything everywhere all at once. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the marketing campaign was just abs is absolutely terrific. I think, you know, the fact that they, they've got all these quotes saying, you know, the scariest film in years and like the must-see horror film, like you're going to be shocked, you're going to be disgusted, you're going to be... like I think all that is going to really just tick a lot of boxes for a lot of horror film fans. And I think, I mean, I certainly went, my, my girlfriend's a big horror fan. I certainly went home and I was like, you've got to watch this trailer, you know, because I do think, uh, you know, it, it's going to tick a lot of boxes. It's going to get a lot of horror fans excited. And really, where's the competition this summer? Like you said, you know, yeah. Conjuring films do really well. Um, but we haven't really, in the next sort of three months, got anything else of its kind. So I think for horror fans, that's going to be the only sort of uh, cinema trip that some horror fans might make over the next three months. So I think it'll do well. Maybe not the, you know, the highest grossing film, but I think, you, I think you hit the nail on the head, Rachel, when you said in terms of, you know, you know, money wise for what it was made for and, you know, profit, I think it will be a real sort of sleeper hit. This, yeah, this I mean, year. what do they cost like $10 million? I mean, yeah. nothing, nothing yeah. to make. Um, well, my number eight is speaking of superheroes, it's the DC League of Super Pets. Uh, okay. I just think that you'll have enough people that will bring their kids, their families. Uh, it's got all star voice cast with The Rock and Kevin Hart and Kenna Reeves and Kate McKinnon and all of this. It's about superheroes superhero dogs dogs are cute people like dogs i just think yeah, it's I probably do. gonna be a big hit <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, people do love dogs you're, you're right totally and I, I i love dogs i love animated <laughs> dogs too and and i think you know i'm not going to spoil too much it is on my list but a bit further down but um yeah you're totally right rachel and what's interesting is this time last year if we even if we all can remember warner brothers did that deal with hbo max for day and date releasing um, right. and they did films like tom and jerry um, and those were still box office success you know i think at least for the first few months of 2021 mm -hmm. and then i think the second half, I think it really cost, you know, Warner Brothers the money. Yeah, um, but I think you know, something like Tom and Jerry, which I didn't necessarily love, but I think it was still a box office success, but it also previewed on HBO Max. And I think now they don't have that anymore. I think this would do really well. Yeah. I mean, if it was Illumination uh, instead of Warner Brothers, I would have it even higher because that just Illumination is so brilliant in marketing their films. Uh, un un uh, there, there's nobody like them in marketing. <laughs> um, they have the best. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I still think this will will do very well. So let's see. So Dan, what's your number seven? Well, very different to DC League of Super Pets. <laughs> I've gone for number seven, Jordan Peele's Nope. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm predicting. I don't know, but I think Joe has got this much higher. Um, I don't just because you know not out of sheer adoration and love for Jordan Peele I adore Get Out I, I adore Us and those are both box office successes but I just think with the amount of family films we have this summer I think those will generate the most money um, yeah. whereas I think something like this will draw in the the, the, the kind of um, 
18 to 25 year old demographic and I think it will draw on the adults but I not that not you know not necessarily the families and the children um also it comes out at a very strange time yeah I think it comes out like 22nd of July I expect at least over here um and it's in between some family movies and so I think it'll do really really well I just think my other six picks are going to generate the more money on the box office but yeah I love Jordan Peele yeah well I should just I'll go next I also have nope at seven <laughs> Um, I, it's a little bit of a <laughs> risk, but I feel like, I mean, even though it's an original film, I feel like he is basically a brand at this point. So I think people will go just to see his films, even though I, I was a little bit disappointed with us. It has good things about it, but I didn't love the story. Um, but I, I think I still am somebody who's, I mean, just look at the candy land. I mean, that did well with even though it wasn't even his film it just had his brand on it um so i think that there's something there i think the movie looks intriguing uh and uh uh the uh sort of the the idea of sort of this bad supernatural uh, weather events happening and i think it'll be good i hope it'll be good uh so yeah it's a bit of a risk i think having it at seven but I you got to take some risks. <laughs> Your list. But what what do you what do you think Joe? The 7. So my number 7 is Minions uh Rise of Gru. Ooh. Um and I mean the, I mean the thing with the Minions and Dis- Despicable Me and that franchise you know you've on the one hand it has been a while now since we've had uh, a Minions film or a Despicable Me film it feels like um, certainly with the pandemic and everything um, so I'm not sure if you know as much excitement is there that said the Minions are such a fantastic creation that they've sort of entered the pop culture like pantheon like or anyway just on their own I, I genuinely think there are some people who don't even realize that they came from Despicable Me <laughs> there's probably People who don't even know where they come from, but they're so cute. They're so adorable that I think that, you know, they have entered the the pop culture pantheon and people do love the Minions. So I do think it's going to do really, really well at the box office. I think it is going to do incredibly well, but there are a couple, like you said, Rachel, sometimes you just got to take risks and I've got a couple of risky ones, which I think could (laughs) could pip it to the post but I think okay. yeah it will do well and um yeah I'm excited for it because I do love the Despicable Me movie so yeah I'm mm-hmm. personally excited for it are you a fan of Rachel's reviews do you look forward to family movie night female film critics panels or the talking Disney podcast if so please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron as a patron you get to access monthly events such as the watch alongs and Q and A's where you get to talk to stars and find out the behind the scenes of the movie making industry. And you can pick what I review for a family movie night, or even become a guest on the podcast podcasts and YouTube channels are expensive. And I really, really could use your help. I would so appreciate it. You also get to be a member of the Facebook group where we talk about all the films that we're seeing and we have so much fun. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies and select one of the Rachel's fan tiers. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Dan, what's your number six? Well, my number six is the DC League of Super Pets. Okay. Um, I'm not going to, I've spoken about it already. Yeah, I just think, and what is a continuing <laughs> theme in the next couple of slots will be <clears throat> that kind of film. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I like, you know, like you said, Rachel, I think it's Warner Brothers. It's got the DC brand to it which, you know, I still think I know DC isn't quite Marvel in terms of box office, um, but I still think it's got that brand. Personally, I didn't like the trailer at all. Um, I think it's got an impressive cast that, you know, Dwayne Johnson, um, you know, massive, massive cast. Um, but for me, um, I just feel the trailer, I, it wasn't very funny. I didn't think there was some really kind of laugh out loud moments. And I, I, I love animated films. Um, but I think the kids will like it. I think it will reach its target audience. And yeah, I think, like I said, it's, I think it's the fact mm-hmm. that they have for DC. I think if they call this film Super Pets, I mean, not they wouldn't get as much money, I, I, in my opinion. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, my number six is the new Pixar Lightyear. And the reason why is because 
I, I just feel like it's a confusing project. I hated the first teaser. I thought it looked so pretentious and annoying. I didn't like it with the star man and everything. And I just like, who is this made for? Like, are kids going to like this super self-serious, like buzz kind of movie? I, I don't know. I just thought it was weird. And, but then like, I have to say the most recent trailer looked more fun and it looked like maybe something more kids would like. And you can, should never count out Pixar, especially anything in the Toy Story world. Toy Story 4 made over a billion dollars, uh, the last one. So, of course, but I feel like it's a tricky film to, uh, to market, and I'm just not sold on it yet as a person. But, I, you know, and I didn't love Turning Red. So mine, it's just might not be my year for Pixar, <laughs> uh, but I hope I like it. I hope it's a surprise. I don't know. Uh, I just feel like it's a weird project, but just on the brand and Disney and buzz and all that, I had to get it at six. Oh, so. interesting. Very interesting. Uh, what about you, Joe? Well, my number six, not quite as high as I think Dan thought it would be, but my number six is nope. Um, mm. Because I, 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 for all the reasons he said, you know, I think Jordan Peele is is a staple now. I think he has got that brand, like you were saying, Rachel, where, you know, I mean, you look at that first trailer and like his name is all over it, literally. And, and that's sort of the big selling point of it. I think the mystery element as well is is going to really help it. And I think the less that is sort of advertised about the film, I think the yeah. better it will do. Um, it's sort of giving me that um, like Cloverfield vibe where, you know, that, that trailer came out and people were like trying to work out what it was, what's going on. And I think if they really focus on, on getting a really strong marketing campaign um, behind it, especially... And and they keep people guessing until they sit you know sit down and watch it. Um, I think that'll be a really massive pull uh, for audiences. So I don't think it's going to do incredibly well, um, but I think I think it you know it, it's got a strong chance of of being a really like talked about movie. Uh, at least I think Word of Mouth will do it. Will the wonders? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, Dan. What is your number five? Uh, my number five is the man himself, Mr. Tom Cruise. I've gone for Top Gun Maverick. Um, this, I think, is the last of a dying breed of films that have been delayed so long that I don't care about them anymore. Okay? <laughs> this film, the last, it's like, it was like this, Black Widow, Death on the Nile, all these films. You kept seeing the trailer every time you went to the theatre. Um, and it, it just kept going, going. I've seen this trailer more times than I've had cook, me- cook meals, to be honest. Um, and so, yeah, I, I put it number five because of the fan base and um, because of the people that love the original Top Gun. Um, I'm going to say right now, I've not seen the original Top Gun. and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. Um, but I think the trailer is well made. The re- early reviews are excellent. And I'm sure I will enjoy it. Um, it's just one of those films, I think it's been delayed so long. I mean, when you think about it, it was supposed to come out last year and Paramount pushed it all the way until the end of May. I mean, there wasn't even a case of, oh, we'll release it this time and get delayed and get delayed. It was just, oh, we're going to release it in the summer. Yeah. Um, I think, I, you know, I, I love Tom Cruise. I think he's an action staple and he's a, you know, he's a real kind of blockbuster icon. I love the Mission Impossible films. And I remember when um, in the summer of 2020, when cinemas reopened for the first time, I went to rewatch Mission Impossible Rogue Nation um, in the cinema in IMAX in like surround sound. And it was incredible. I, I, I love him. I think he's great. Um, but yeah, I put it at number five. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to reach a billion or anything like that. A- anything near kind of. So, yeah, I really, I really don't. Want to I, I am uh, shocked, Daniel. I am shocked. Yeah, I think, I think number five is acceptable. Am I the only yeah, one? No, I, I, I had it at five, and then with the with the incredible reviews, I oh, spoiler, I bumped it up to four because I mean, people are almost everyone is saying it's better than the original, and that it's just an incredible time. So that's got to help a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll do very well. I don't know about a billion. I don't know if anything, maybe one, maybe Ooh. two. I don't know. I think I, I still we still have people hesitant coming back. We still have, I, I, I don't know if we have a Spider-Man No Way Home that I'm like, yes, this is going to make a billion dollars. 
No, Maybe. no, I, Maybe. I, I'd agree. I'd agree. I'd agree. I don't think there's anything on the list. Yeah. That, you know, um, well, mine but it doesn't need to. No, no, exactly. Yeah. People are going back and that's the important thing. Yeah. Well, okay. So my number five, speaking of movies we've been seeing trailers of since the dawn of time, it's Minions, The Rise of Crew. <laughs> I, I swear, the first, I think I did a trailer reaction in 2019. Wow, this. wow. We have wow. trailers for this stupid Minions movie for <laughs> I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so weird. But in perspective. I don't like the Minions. Anyone who knows my channel knows that I think they're incredibly annoying and... I don't know if it was if I ran the world. I think that Mega Mind should have been the big hit instead of yes. Despicable Me. It's yes, a better movie. Rachel, it's the same yes. topic, same year. <laughs> um, I just don't think they're that special. And I hated the first Minions movie. I thought it was so badly written. It was so poorly done. I didn't like it at all. Um, and then the Despicable Me three. I do prefer these movies when they have Gru and the girls. Yes. Because just a whole bunch of minions is just overwhelming. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's just too much. too much. And I mean, and a lot of the jokes in the first min minions movie were pretty tawdry, low class. You've got like the minion in a thong. And I mean, it's just like, I'm like, why? I don't need that in my life. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, but I just can't ever put illumination much lower they are the best at marketing their films even sing Two in the middle of omicron made over 400 million dollars on an yeah. 80 million budget i mean unbelievable yeah and i i, I really enjoyed sing Two as well yeah. and, and but i i totally agree with you rachel i think I prefer the Despicable Me movies, and I'm. I think they've announced potentially. I think they've greenlit a Despicable Me four, and I'm more excited about that than I would be Minions three. Only because you're absolutely right. For me, it works best when you've got Gru and and the girls, and I think they're the heart of those first couple of movies. And without them, you're right. It, it's sort of how many jokes can we have, and and it is very silly. And, and I don't think the first Minions film worked quite as well as the Despicable Me movies, but I definitely think that's why they've sort of gone down that avenue of, okay, well, let's bring in young Gru and try and sort of tie it to like an origin story. Will it work? I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, you wonder if there will, it will ever be a tipping point where people will be done with the franchise. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't seem so. No, and I don't think And they so. seem perfectly happy to keep making them until... <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, I just I couldn't put it anywhere else but fifth. I I just think it's gonna make an insane amount fit. of money and I'm gonna have to keep reviewing them till the dawn of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well let's hope it fails. <laughs> Walks off his bomb. Kids, don't do it. Oh. Rachel said, don't do it. Yeah. Um what about you, Joe? What do you have at five? So I have Lightyear um, at five. Mm -hmm. Again, I just think, you know, um, you've got the brand, you've got the Toy Story theme. Definitely agree with you. I think that last trailer has done the film of World of Wonders because that first trailer, I, I think when they announced the concept, everyone was a bit like taken aback and be like, well, this is strange. Like you're doing a Buzz Lightyear film and people like trying to work out like, is it an origin? Like, does that really happen in the Toy Story universe? And I think like the first teaser didn't really clarify any of that, but the last trailer, like I said, it was very fun. Um, I think we've got a bit more clarity as to, you know, what the story is and everything around the, the narrative of it, which I think helps, but it's colorful. It's Pixar. It's the first Pixar film, uh, you know, on the big screen in years and I think that will be a big draw as well the fact that it's not going yeah. straight to Disney plus I think that's going to bring in uh, the families who are going to be excited to see it and you have just got that Toy Story brand uh, you know generations of people who love Toy Story you know my parents uh, me you know my my niece my nephew there's just so many different generations who've all got some sort of memory I think around Toy Story so I think I think it will 
be a, a massive success just just because of that really if i were disney pixar i would do a little spot a little featurette with tim allen's buzz basically introducing everybody to it and explaining yes. i think that would do yeah. a world of good yeah absolutely and i do I feel agree. bad for him because where is he like why, yeah. like what, yeah. what, what's the deal with that it's weird very it's strange weird. All right, Dan, what's your number four? Well, all I can say is hashtag where's Tim Allen? Because my number four <laughs> is Lightyear. Um, and I am the complete opposite, Rachel. I have loved the trailers. I'm so excited that Pixar are finally releasing a film in theatres. Um, I swear, if they release one more film to Disney+, Plus, the Pixar employees would probably go on strike. They would burn Disney headquarters down. And so they should, because I really feel like the last year... And putting COVID aside, Disney have purposefully gone after Pixar films. They've reduced them to a lesser quality than Disney films by putting it on Disney+. Plus. I believe that. Um, and these are beautifully um, animated films that deserve to be seen on the big screen. And I, I understand with Soul, um, because Soul was obviously at a time when COVID was really bad, cinemas were closed. Um, Luca is why I thought Luca suited Disney Plus. Um, but, um, and I, actually, I, I love Luca so much, I would love to see it in theatres. Um, Turning Red, I'm kind of glad. I wasn't a big fan of Turning Red, like you are, Rachel. Um, I felt like it was a lot about the social commentary. It was kind of forcing a theme down our throats, and it wasn't just a kid's film first. But this looks such escapism. Um, I, I love the character of Buzz. I, I quite like the fact that they're showing us an origin story um, and kind of doing a solo movie. I agree, I felt like the first trailer with the David Bowie soundtrack was quite serious, um, but I'm really excited for this. I'm glad it's on the big screen and I think it's going to do amazing. Um, I think at least half a billion worldwide, if not a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not my top kids film so far. It's not my top, um, mm. but yeah. I, but it, for me personally, it, I'm most excited for this. Well, number four for me is Top Gun. Like I said, Top Gun Maverick. I, I just feel like it's got a lot of energy and maybe I'm just feeding off of film Twitter and my friends that have just loved it so much. And But then you also have the nostalgia. You also have Tom Cruise. Uh, it, it We have been seeing those trailers for, for three years. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, but... It looks good to me. So I just hope that a good film, I mean, I was going to, even if it had gotten bad reviews, I was still excited to see it just for the racing scenes alone for the, for the flying scenes. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <Number four. laughs> uh, what about you, Joe? Um, so my number four is Dr. Strange two. Um, obviously it's done incredibly well already and has surpassed expectations. I think it was announced today that it's passed, um, you know, the, the amount that the first film uh, made or, you know, at this stage already. Um, so I think, you know, when we look back, obviously it's been out now for a couple of weeks. Um, I think when we look back, when, once it's all done and dusted, I think Doctor Strange 2 will be, um, will, will have done comfortably well not oh, as yeah. well as say, you know, No Way Home, you know, because that is a, a absolute Goliath of a film. Um, and I think, again, word of mouth is, is a big thing as well. And I think the fact that what No Way Home had for it was people talking about, you know, all the big reveals and the big twists and everything like that. And it got just people so excited to go see it. Whereas this time around, I mean, we reviewed it on our most recent show. I liked it a lot more than Dan. And I admired the fact that it was, doing something different and sort of dipping its toes into a horror, you know, genre. Um, but I think a lot of people have sort of been let down by their sort of fan fiction theories and hopes that, you know, oh, Tom Cruise is going to be in it for, you know, you know as, as I, alternate Iron Man and we're going to have Wolverine show up. And I think a lot of people were let down by that. So I don't think it's the word of mouth is quite there getting people in either. Um, so I think it'll do really, you know, it's already done well. I think by the end of the summer, it'll be a massive hit and moderately well, but I don't think it's going to be do quite as well as a couple of the others on my list. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I originally had it number one uh, because I thought that it was going to crush it even more, but it's certainly done well. I mean, it's Marvel, MCU, it's going to do well, of course. Uh, but, uh, and I enjoyed it. I gave it a seven out of 10. It's not perfect, but I actually, and a lot of people complained about Wanda. I thought Wanda was great. One of the best villains they've ever had in the MCU, in my opinion. 
Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so what do you have at three, Dan? Well, I, pre-warning, I have not included Doctor Strange 2 because that was so two weeks ago. <laughs> so um, I've gone for something... Um, I've gone for something really left field, guys. So hold on to your seats. I've gone for Minions, The Rise of Gru. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not left field at all. And Rachel, I want to give you a hug because I hate <laughs> the Minions as well. I think they are disgusting little creatures who deserve to be you know, thrown away in the basement um, and just never to be seen again. I think they are so annoying and so infuriating. I don't find them funny with their little voices and their actions and their, you know, their crudeness. Um, but yeah, for, for example, though, my girlfriend adores them. So I think what's going to happen is she's going to go see it and I'm going to go stay in the toilet or something like that. I'll just kind of <laughs> sit, sit in the waiting area because um, I'd rather do that. So yeah, I'm not, if I've never seen the first Minions, um, Despicable Me th mm. films are okay. They're not really my cup of tea, um, but I think it's, it's going to do amazing. And I agree. I, I loved Sing 2. It's my favorite um, animated film of the year so far. Um, I love, you know, I love that franchise and that's done incredibly well. Like Rachel said, even during the, you know, kind of the, the, the winter peak of COVID, because, you know, family films do well, um, you know, family audiences turn out and, obviously Universal have done a really good strategy with these films. And I, I think out of all the studios during COVID, Universal have really kind of done the right strategies of, of releasing a film and then waiting a month or two and putting it on PVOD. Um, not only has it generated more money for them, but I think it's been a lot fairer on theatres. Yeah. Um, and actually you can measure it. So something like Sing 2, for example, it, it did so well. They they prolonged the window between theatres and going to PVOD. Um, however, other films haven't. So they've kind of said, okay, let's release that early. So I think it's a really good marketing strategy. And yeah, I think Minions yeah. will do will gross higher than Lightyear. I'm going to say it right now. I think it will. Yeah. I think so too. Right. And I mean, Sing 2, it just creeped along there. It never was number one. I don't think it would never, I don't even know if it was number two. It was just like there for, for a long time from before Christmas all the way through to the end of February, keep going. I mean, it, it just was the little engine that could at the box office. <laughs> I, it's very impressive. And they keep their costs down. So they almost, they guarantee, like The Secret Life of Pets 2 was the most underperforming of any, any of the Illumination films, except for if you include Hop. But they, they, keep, their pri they keep their budgets so low that they're like between 60 and 80 million dollars so they pretty much guarantee that they are going to make a profit on their films and i mean you look at seeing two practically four times profit so it's really yeah. it's such a well-run company i wish yeah. they made movies i like more yeah but uh but it is extremely they should write a book on how to make money because they're very good at it. <laughs> and I would buy that. I would buy that book. I, I want to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> you have the minions on the front and then the French people that are making the movies. I forget that. Yes. <laughs> but, um, all right. Well, my number three is Doctor Strange. I moved it from one to three. Uh, it still made a lot of money. So I was debating about uh, my number two, but uh, but I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it ends up panning out, but it does seem like it took, it doesn't have the word of mouth that for, to be number one, I don't think, but uh, Joe, what's your number three? So my number three sticking with the superhero theme is Thor, Love and Thunder. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, I, that trailer, just incredible. I, I love that trailer. Um, the first trailer they, they've released and you know mm -hmm. when I went to see Doctor Strange you could just feel the excitement for it in the room uh, when, when watching it with all the, all the Marvel sort of super fans um, I think phase four has been a mixed bag not for me I, I love Marvel's phase four but I think a lot of people have found it to be a bit of a mixed bag I think uh, it's going in different directions and, and weird sort of characters are being introduced, not just in the films, but on the, you know, Disney Plus, like Moon Knight most recently. I love all that stuff. And we said on a recent show, you know, I, I think that's the key to the longevity of the Marvel Universe is, is by doing some things which are a bit weird and, and a bit different and a bit new. That said, 
I think Thor is a OG Avenger. He's an original. I think he's a fan favorite. I think people are going to be excited to go on another adventure with him. Uh, add into the mix, obviously, Taika Waititi's back. And, and a lot of people, it's not my personal favorite, but a lot of people cite uh, Ragnarok as, as one of the best uh, MCU entries. Uh, I And then on top of that, the little sort of sugar icing on the top, you've got Natalie Portman returning as Mighty Thor. I think that there's a lot there. Uh, and, and you've got the Guardians as well. I think there's a lot there which is going to make this more successful, not by much, but I think a little bit more successful than Doctor Strange. Um, and I mean, we'll see how Black Panther 2 does in November, but of the three, I think this is the one I'm most excited for, and I think it will likely do the best out of out of the three this year. Yeah, no. Uh, what about you? What's your number two, uh, Dan? Uh, my number two is Jurassic World Dominion. Um, like I said, this is a film that um, I'm sure has been delayed, but I haven't noticed it as much. Um, I love the first Jurassic World with Chris Pratt. I think it was excellent. Um, the second one, not so much. Um, I remember kind of the storyline just feeling very generic and um, the cast weren't quite at the same level, but I'm really excited for this. Obviously they're bringing back a lot of the fan favorites, um, you know, which I think will bring in the core fan base and that nostalgia, you know, and I always think of back at Scream this year when they talk about a requel and it's about bringing back, you know, the, the diehard favorites of the series, Sam Neill, obviously, um, so yeah, I think that'll definitely help its box office. Um, and I, I really do like this series a lot. I think it's very self-aware, very tongue-in-cheek um, and just great visuals. It's a real popcorn, you know, blockbuster film that you take the whole family to see. And I think it will do really well. Again, I, I, it's, I don't think it's going to do as well as my number one pick. I think it'll probably go around six, 700 million total worldwide um i've said the years and i think they'll um they'll bring out another one but yeah jurassic world dominion is number two for me well i'll jump in quickly and i'll say we finally agree on one dan <laughs> hey, um, jurassic world <laughs> dominion is also my number two and yeah i couldn't have said it better i think the fact that the legacy characters are back i think that does tie into a lot of the success of say something like No Way Home, I think it's a sort of new thing now where, where people get excited to see the, the, the old and the new sort of blend. And I think it's finally sort of paying off what the what the whole concept was when, when you know, Jurassic World was announced. I think a lot of people assumed that it would be, you know, where we're at now with dinosaurs just running rampant uh, you know, through through the real world. So I think that's a really neat uh, idea. And yeah, I, I, I've got a very excited nephew who's like already like got three parties or whatever that he's going to go see it. So, I mean, you just take in those, those groups of people alone. And I think it is going to do mega, mega bucks. I mean, the first Jurassic World was a massive success. I think it was like the highest grossing film like uh, 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 of all time when it was released or something like that. They've all been and, huge hits. Yeah. And I agree. The second one didn't really do it for me. But this one, it looks like, you know, the fact that they're saying it's the end of the saga and all that business. You're absolutely right. There'll be more in, in probably 10 years time. But I think there's a lot there, which is going to get a lot of people excited to go see it. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarky Smart Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. Well, Jurassic Park is one of my top five favorite movies. I absolutely love it. It's the movie I've seen the most in the theaters. 
but every single one of the sequels has been a disappointment for me. (laughs) (laughs) They always get me so excited. And then I just feel like the scripts are so dopey and stupid. And the characters, like the, the, the original film, they actually had good characters that were well-written and interesting and had like, they took on themes and had something to say. And, and these are just monster dopey monster movies at best, which is fine, I guess. But I don't know. They, they, and, and even in this new one, the trailer, I'm like, Oh, that looks really cool. And I, I know that I'm going to be disappointed, but yet I still <laughs> am excited and, and, and they get it, get me every single time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I hate Rive Styles Howard's character. She's so stupid. She makes me crazy. <laughs> and I mean, Chris Pratt is good. He's very charismatic. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just some of the plots have been so dumb in these Jurassic World movies. But we'll see. I I, I am excited to have the legacy, you know, characters back. Um, I do have it at number one, uh, because I, I, when I first did my, um, predictions, I had it at three and pretty much across the board, everyone told me that's too low. That's too low. That's too low. So I was like, wow, I guess, cause I figured, well, maybe it might slightly underperform just cause a lot of people didn't like the last one, mm-hmm. but that doesn't seem to be the case. That doesn't, I mean, if I feel like if there's a movie that's critic proof, this is it. People yeah. are going to go no matter what even if it gets terrible reviews. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Mm-hmm. Um, so my number two is Thor Love and Thunder because I think Thor is great. I absolutely love Ragnarok. I thought it was so funny. One of the most rewatchable MCU movies that they've ever done. I I just, I absolutely love Loki and Thor so much. I know, I don't think... I'm hoping Loki will surprise us and show up. Oh, that would I'd be really that. fun. I would love that. Yeah, so I would much. be so happy because <laughs> I loved Loki. I mean, I'm just a Loki fan. fan yeah. girl. I love Loki. And Thor's great. <laughs> I mean, Lady Thor will see. Mm. I don't know. I haven't loved her performance in these movies up to this point, but she definitely has used it as an excuse to get super ripped. Like, She's got some guns amazing. in this one. I, mean, I, I was shook by well <laughs> in that trailer when I saw those guns. You know, she yeah, got better guns than me, and I was like, "What? Like that, that's just super impressive." <laughs> well, I, come on, I, I... <laughs> and I mean, Taika Waititi hasn't failed I, me yet. I've loved all of his performances and 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 directing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think it's going to be super fun, and it and it will definitely because Doctor Strange. I would not take children to see it. It is no. too scary. Uh, but I think that you can take the family to Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, 100%. 100% yeah. And the Guardians are going to be in it. Eh. I know, exactly. Uh, exactly. Dan, what is your number one drum roll? Okay, drum roll, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, big surprise, mine is Thor Love and Thunder. And it oh, seems God. like I have the most hope in this film. Um, and I'm going to go as far to say I think this will reach a billion. I really do. Yeah, I don't could. think it will reach the way home, but um, I think it will wipe Doctor Strange 2 out the way. It'll be like, get out the way and make way <laughs> for a real box office return. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I think this has ticks every box. First off, I love Taika Waititi as a director. I recently went back and watched the two Thor, the original two th- films directed by Kenneth Branagh. And there seems to be this kind of hostility between fans of the first two and fans of the Taika Waititi films. Um, I, obviously, the, tonally, they're very different films. Um, Thor Ragnarok is incredible. It's, it's the film that got me into the MCU. Um, I, I remember going to see it just on in, in an afternoon and just loving it, um, loving its humor, loving, it, loving its you know um, satire. It's so um, and, funny, you know, yeah. It's so funny. I just I think it's one of my favorites for sure. Um, I'm not keen on the first two Thor films. I think they're really self indulgent and serious, and and just really kind of dull at points to watch. So I'm Team Taika Waititi all the way, and I think this looks incredible. And um, they've obviously taken it in a very different direction. I, I personally feel like they are removing Thor from this storyline. Um, they, they, you know, just his portrayal in this film is very different. He seems a lot, you know, more tired. He's not taking that kind of stronger role. Um, and I think they're making their way to get Natalie Portman in his place. I really do. Um, but and, that kind of does I, make sense after Endgame. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. I just think when you think about, you know, um, you know, the character of Thor and how long he's been going, and he's featured in so many films that. 
maybe it is time. And like you said, the Guardians, the Guardians of the Galaxy are coming in as well. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see Volume 3 and, and how that combination, um, you know, fits. But yeah, I just think there's going to be a, a lot of, um, you know, Easter eggs and a lot of um, you know, spoilers and, and cameos and, and surprises in this. And you're right, Rachel. It, the, the real thing I think that Doctor Strange did, you know, didn't do very well is that it, it marketed itself, um, you know, as, as if it was for children. I mean, if you look at the trailer for Doctor Strange, there's no violence, there's no gore, there's no kind of creepy ghouls. And then when you watch the film, it's like a completely different film. And, and I know Joe loved it for that. But for me, I was like, well, this is a completely different film than, than what was advertised. Whereas this, I think it's going to be suited towards a family demographic. I think it, it's just going to tick more boxes. And it, I think, it, yeah, I think it's got a real chance of reaching a billion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, what is your number one? Well, Rachel, as you said, sometimes in life, you've just got to take a risk. <laughs> and if I was a betting man, I'd probably put a bit of money on Top Gun Maverick being the highest <laughs> grossing of the summer. Um, <laughs> mainly because Tom Cruise. I love Tom Cruise. I think he is... There's a lot of articles at the moment, like the, the Telegraph did a a piece about Tom Cruise. Is he the savior of the, of the classic blockbuster? Um, because there's just something like otherworldly about this guy, right? I mean, I sat down last night and turned on the TV and it was the Queen's Jubilee, um, you know, uh, celebration. And Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise was in the Queen's Jubilee presentation hosting. I mean, that is extraordinary that Tom Cruise, of all the Hollywood actors, would be at the Queen's like Platinum Jubilee hosting. I think he is, uh, there's been, like I said, Rachel, there's a lot of buzz about this, a lot of buzz. You've got fans, I'm not a fan of the first film, I must say, and which is, which is probably a bit more surprising why I'd have such faith in this. Um, but I think the advertising is there. Before I went uh, Doctor Strange, they played like two trailers and a five minute clip of the movie. So they're really hammering home the publicity on this. Uh, Tom Cruise, like I said, is everywhere at the moment, uh, including the Queen's Jubilee. But also Mission Impossible, the last one, made 791 million. That's how much it made, Mission Impossible Fallout, 791 million. That film felt like it was in the cinema for like the whole of the summer, three months. And I think if this can generate the same amount of hype and the same amount of buzz, and it does seem to be doing that at the moment on Twitter, five-star reviews, people calling it the, you know, the film of the year and, and whatnot. The, the, already people going, oh, Oscar buzz. I don't buy that, but people are even throwing that into the conversation. I just think it could be a real dark horse. I think people are craving something which is different. And, you know, you know, I know it's a sequel, but different from comic book movies. And I think it will bring, I, I can imagine dads taking their sons to watch it and family's gonna watch it. You know, people of the fans of the first film. Um, and I just think it's gonna do incredibly well. Maybe not 791 million well, but I think it's gonna do a lot better than I think some people are giving it credit for. So yeah, Top Gun Maverick, my number one. Yeah, it's very exciting. Bold uh, choice, bold yes. choice. We'll see. It, it, it could. <laughs> I mean, it really could be a surprise. I think it will do well. There's no doubt about that. Um, well, so a few other quick little movies coming up that I'm excited about. I am really excited for the new Persuasion. That's on Netflix, so it's not box office. But Dakota Johnson uh, in our lead, Henry Golding, uh, is in it. I, you know, I love me some Jane Austen. So I'm really excited for that. <laughs> I'm excited for Where the Crawdads Sing, which I haven't read the book yet, but I will. Mm. But I've heard nothing but incredible things about the book. People love it. it Daisy Edgar Jones. It looks like it could be a sleeper to me. Sleeper hit. Um, another one that I think could be a sleeper hit is Easter Sunday. I think this could be sort of a, my uh, my Big Fat Creek Wedding or um, uh, Crazy Rich Asians, that kind of thing. Uh, it stars Joe Coy and it's basically about his crazy uh, Filipino big loud family. It looked charming, funny. Um, I think it could be a, a sleeper hit. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, the, those are some of the, I think it'd be interesting to see. I didn't love Cha-Cha Real Smooth as much as it 
everyone else at Sundance did, but it could also be a little bit of a sleeper. It's, it's very crowd pleasing. So Ooh. those are some uh, that nice. to look out for every, literally everyone else at Sundance thought it was the best thing <laughs> ever. So <laughs> Uh, did you have any others this summer that you're you're looking f- uh, forward to? Well, I I'd say uh, I well I can't speak on Dan's behalf, but I think Fisherman's Friends too, <laughs> one and all, <laughs> is definitely definitely up there. Fisherman's Friends too. That's really <laughs> Rachel Tate <laughs> is like, what what are they talking about? <laughs> have you seen the first Fisherman's Friends? Rachel? I have not. It's a, it's a, it's an oh no, classic. it hasn't got it hasn't got a US release date, Joe. <laughs> it, it, it is a film which is a based off a true life story of a group of fishermen in the UK who um, started singing shanty tunes, and they ended up going on uh, a very popular daytime TV show called This Morning um, in the UK with Phil and Holly, and it's like a Good Morning America, I guess. And they became so popular, they ended up getting a record deal. And, what? and, and, and yeah, and I it's a true story. And yeah, you have um, to watch it. It's yeah, it's it's an uh, I think you'd love it, Rachel. And they've done a sequel, it was such a big hit. They've done a sequel now, probably not based on a true story, but it's following the same characters um as they deal with uh day-to-day life uh being being rock stars i guess i can't so believe a musical went under my notice this is crazy yeah, it, i mean great. rachel it, rachel it was such a big hit it made no way home shiver it made almost a billion dollars <laughs> <laughs> but i i i'm excited for that yeah, and and that one which cute. i was excited for rachel until i saw your um reviews on twitter today was men but um by the sounds of it i yes. should uh, lower my expectations when it comes to that well other people seem to be enjoying it more than i and uh, it wasn't for me <laughs> but it- <laughs> i love that that is your catchphrase it wasn't for me <laughs> but it's one of those movies that you either go with the allegory and the whatever and you like it or it doesn't work for you and so that was that would be me in the latter um Absolutely. but uh i don't know i found it extremely pretentious and annoying um but your mileage may vary as they say <laughs> yeah I'll, yeah well i'll go in with uh maybe a few uh you know reduced expectations there just in case <laughs> Yeah, and Joe, if you come out and do it, enjoy it. You just got to turn to me and say, "It wasn't for me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I, mean, I, I do I have, have to say, say, it's um on Disney Plus, but the new Rescue Rangers movie is a billion times oh, better than wow. it has any excuse to be. It's actually quite wow. funny and surprising. And there's, I guess, cameos that in the lieu of it really does feel like they were trying to make a roger rabbit movie when i first heard that i was like oh give me a break but (laughs) it does actually kind of feel that way i don't know it was way better than i expected so maybe looking forward to that yeah Mm -hmm. what about you dan um, well, my one film, and this is definitely something that's not going to be pretentious or annoying, um, and you two are going to be very surprised by this. And the reason I'm so excited to watch it is because I've never seen a TV series. I've not even seen an episode, and I want to go in not seeing anything. And so I'm quite excited for the Bob's Burgers movie. Oh, oh. I see that. I see that tomorrow, actually, believe it or not. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Rachel won't come out and say, it wasn't for me. Yeah. Do yeah. oh, <laughs> you watch the show? Dan? Never, never seen an episode, and oh, I actually okay. don't want to because I feel like I don't have time anyway. It's out in two weeks, but um, I, I, I want to go in blind. And I was, I really found the trailer funny. It's my yeah. style of TV. It's very kind of South Park, Family Guy, The Simpsons. Um, and yeah, I love the fact that it's in cinemas. And um, I mean, personally, I'm su- really surprised um, Fox has not put this on Disney Plus. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy it's in the cinemas. And, yeah. um, and you know, I'm, I'm excited for it. I, well, I, they- I see you, Dan. I, I can see you. <laughs> I've watched a couple of episodes. I, Hannah's a, a massive fan. So I sort of dip in and out. And it's one of those shows you can definitely do that. Mm. Um, just stick it on, yeah. you know, on the off the cuff. Um, but yeah, now you said it, Dan, I can totally see your humor in it. I think you could, you will enjoy it. I can see you liking it. Well, and it's nice to have a 2D animated film in yeah. the theaters. I don't think they had the choice because it's a Century Fox film. It would have to go to HBO Max. 
and uh, that's why they didn't put on disney plus uh, it's right, like okay. uh, west side story was that way um uh, death and now was that way but a bunch of the uh, disney movies that they that were fox movies they don't actually have the streaming rights for it's for hbo max so i think that's why but Ooh, yeah. yeah it could be uh i hope it'll be good uh, i will look forward to seeing it so anyway there we go we did it we thank did you it. so much to both of you this was so much fun yes thank you for thank having you. us yeah. we'll have to do at the end of the summer we'll have to do a little look back to see how our predictions held up and also what we ended up thinking of the movies that'd be fun yeah when yeah. top gun ends up being the most people. successful film <laughs> then you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like marvel <laughs> see you later <laughs> <laughs> Well, where can people find you? Where where can people find you on social media and find your uh, podcast? Um, so you can find us um, on Facebook. We're under the Dan Joe Film Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Um, we're at DJ Film Show. That's at DJ Film Show. And you can catch all of our old episodes um, on our, of our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Mixcloud. So cool. yeah. Enjoy. Great. I have it all in the description. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much to both of you. And let us know your predictions in the comment section. We want to see your top tens, what you think, and uh, let us know what you think of our lists and what you think of these upcoming movies. We would love to hear your thoughts. And uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews for both of our podcasts. So we would really appreciate it. And uh, you, you can find out more at our Patreon and merch store. So check that out. And thanks so much. We'll talk to y'all later. Happy movie going. <laughs> Bye. Bye.